have to say my home is my safe place. Yes. And, um, you know, I imagine going somewhere else in the world, but <clears throat> I'm not up for travel anymore like I used to be because it, it seems like every time I go to an airport, they always think I've, I'm trying to pull something over on them, so they question me severely. Do I look like a, a terrorist? My name is Elizabeth Anderson. I am 78 years old. I'm passionate about social justice. I'm passionate about gardening. When I was about nine, let's say, I was visiting with my friend Sandy, and I was spending the night there that night, and they had a guest coming. And the guest came to the door, and he came in, and I was introduced to him. This is Richard Nixon. He's going to be President of the United States. And I shook his hand, and at that moment, I remember thinking, uh-oh, because I was thinking that the President of the United States would be sort of the ultimate peacemaker. Meeting this man and, and seeing his eyes, I was so let down that anyone could think that this would be the person who would take us where we needed to go. I told myself, if Nixon becomes president, I'm leaving the United States. Because I felt betrayed by the country, I've done nothing but break the rules and expectations my whole life. Statistically, when you do that, usually it doesn't end well. And I tell people that. <laughs> I advise them, statistically, this isn't what you want to do. It's what I always do, just because to be true to yourself, you have to do what you have to do. We didn't want to come to Cortez because it was so isolated. And we looked every place else and then came to Cortez. And I said, ah, this is it. I'm home. <laughs> Sorry. And Len, being from the prairie, said, well, I'm not. <laughs> We came here on one of our trips north, and we saw this very site, but it wasn't for sale. We said, well, we'll make one last try on Cortez. And we came here and found out that the price had been lowered. So we built that little cabin. Well, we lived there for four years anyway, in that little tiny space, the four of us. So in order to build this house, we had to first build that walkway to where we were going to build it. And Len already had the idea of the house he wanted to build. And I said, well, what if it doesn't fit on the piece of property we buy? No, it's got to be that house. So, <laughs> Nature is the main inspiration for my art. I'm thinking about the cosmos. You won't find anything figurative in it. It'll just be, I don't know, sort of otherworldly. I remember going to art class in the summertime, not a class, it was just more like to put your children in the summer day and, oh, it's going to be painting, it's going to be painting. And I, and I get there and all they had was, I think, black paint. <laughs> and I wanted colors. because I felt like I was being deprived. My advice to the new generation is pay attention. You have the indigenous plants available for your indigenous animals and insects because they're very important to the continuation of a good life for everyone. If things go south, then there's not going to be the ability to maintain everything and figure out some way that people can be more self-reliant without ruining the environment. And when I say self-reliant, what I mean is a community that helps everybody. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. That's probably the only part of the Bible I know. <laughs> so that would be my aspiration, shall we say. Why take on more than that?